history is strange. All right, so let's have a manifesto, how things fit together. Occasionally there are postcards in this course. We're going to do it in one slide. So systems are everywhere. You can think about the systems you're part of. You can go out and look at the atmosphere. Um, you can think about water coming out of a tap, what that's all connected to. You can think about the food that you eat. Think of how all of those pieces came together to make the plate that you have in front of you. All of the origins of those things. You can think about the atoms involved. You can think about the um, particular species, you know, if it's tofu, right, broccoli and so on, right? Like how did that all get, that was created somewhere and grew somewhere and then processed and da 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 um, And then, you know, you eat it, it passes through you, it goes back in, out into the world. So this is sort of, you know, food. And, you know, and that's something, again, that we're failing to, to do well with. So systems are everywhere. They matter. Um, they're certainly not just the province of one discipline. And so science, once we've got through this period of reductionism that we had to get through if we were going to be successful, the rest of science is about how things fit together. And we get to, we have reality, right? So we have atoms. We can work with them. We can, uh, you know, try to turn lead into gold. So we have the whole alchemy thing. We, we just, that's fair enough. Like you, you try those things, right? And later on we say, oh, that was crazy. But, it, you know, I don't know. Why not? So we work with reality, but then of course we can start to also make our own kinds of atoms. And um, let me maybe explain that. So 300 years, golden age of reductionism, we get to atoms, start to think about these subatomic particles and so on. But DNA, right? it's even less time. Genes, you know, the idea of these things. People, of course we're aware of people for a long time, but understanding how they behave with respect to each other, um, such that we can kind of understand how systems might behave, you know, that's a massive problem. It's still a huge ongoing, ongoing problem. And, and a lot of social psychology has sort of fallen apart recently. So, you know, we're really struggling there. Um, but we, we have DNA, right? Um, uh, you know, there's two, two people involved, but obviously many more people involved. And, and um, with, with that, many people have involved figuring that out. But it's there now, right? We don't get to sort of rip that up and, and start again. I know people want to hack DNA, and yeah, but good luck. So, as I said, understanding and creating, uh, understanding real systems, understanding how we can affect them in some way. You know, we think about ecosystems, right? We introduce wolves back, or we do something that destroyed a particular species, cane toads in Australia. You know, like we're, we're unavoidably messing with things. The, the whole fire. Um, uh, bushfire complex in, in Australia and California and other parts of the world, climate change, you know, these things are happening. How do we, uh, you know, uh, um, contend with them? What, what are, what are uh, you know, what are ways of adjusting those systems so that they are healthier, safer, better for, better for what, right? So we have to do all that too. Um, so, so we can, of course, create new systems. I mean, we've got all these things with uh, technology now, right? All these little, you know, if you think about people's phones, they're all these little magic rectangles floating around that are connected to each other. Obviously, people are sort of involved there too, but, you know, that, that's a new artifact. And it doesn't matter that they have quarks and atoms inside them, right? We've made something that is at a higher level and they interact. Um, you know, when you think about sports or music, we have rules in those that allow certain things to, to emerge. Um, right? So we, we keep playing at these higher and higher levels. Obviously government, just laws in, in general. All right, so that's the game. You know, that's what we do. That's what we have to do going here. We have to absolutely understand the details of things and that's gonna take an enormous amount of time. I mean, biology is full of so many crazy little molecules and so on. So we're gonna keep doing that for a long time, but understanding the system part and creating new systems and so on goes forever. Peace will come back to really at the end of the course and, and we'll touch on throughout is universality, right? So this is a term that comes from statistical mechanics in physics. Uh, it obviously touches, you know, would, would it evokes other, other meanings um, from other realms, but so that, so that just to say what it is, it's that you can have systems that have 
Um, in the details, they might differ, right? They might differ. So we have milk and water, right? They're obviously in, in details different, but um, they can behave in a similar way as they, they flow, not under all circumstances. Um, but, you know, the viscosity is different between them. And then we can put that as a parameter into our model. But very different, you know, ingredients at the bottom, if you like. But they, they conform to the same behaviors. Um, you know, people from different cultures, to the extent that that can work, blah, 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 all sorts of things, right? So, but this is this idea of universality. And, you know, it's limited, right? We don't, we don't say everything is the same as everything. It's not, not the game here. But the fact that there are many kinds of systems that behave, you know, quantitatively in the same way at a macro level, and again, I really want to appeal fluids as a sort of great example, um, means that you know th this is a fair game that we 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 aren't just studying every specific system in isolation um, and we we do have some fields that say that that's just the way it has to be like anthropology and so on like you really nothing nothing can be generalized or universalized and so on I, I don't mean everyone in those fields but you know that that's you know that that's certainly a point of view but in the, in the sciences where we've been able to quantify things in a hard way, and, and, and you know, people will argue that you'll never quantify culture and so on. All right. But where we've been able to do it so far, which of course is the easy part, um, we've been able to see that there are these, these um, that there's universal behavior it exists in the real world. So again, that's different micro details, but they, you know, there's some interaction that's basically similar enough that when you get to the macroscopic behavior, the, the system is behaving in the same way. And really the big deal for us is computing, right? So that uh, there are a couple of pieces here. So um, one is that of course measurement, right? And, and that's instruments as well, but we can measure and we can store vast amounts of data. We can organize it. You know, people in um, working in neuroscience, working in um, uh, you know like life sciences, working in linguistics, working people are using similar computing systems now too, and, and of course the same kinds of so Python and R, right? So there's a lot of agreement across um, in in terms of the tools and and the way we store data. So there's a lot of at that level, there's a lot of uh, reason for people to come together and, and, and talk about things. And so, so that's sort of the storage and the tools we use. Uh, but of course, with computing, we can simulate um, big systems. And that's, that's something that's just been you know, going up and up and up over time. Obviously, we do it with um, weather prediction. You know, again, it's more, more measurements will help. But we also know fundamentally there's a limit. You know, we're not going to be able to predict the weather in detail, you know, really finally two weeks from now, because we understand that from dynamical systems and chaos theory. It's a very profound, deep result. Uh, but we can, you know, move it out a day, move it out a day, though, though it takes a long time. But it's simulations. Um, we can simulate forest fires, but, you know, often these simulations are rudimentary, and we can simulate pandemics. And I'll come back to that in this course. Many of those simulations are very basic, right? They're just very simple toy models and, and people can kind of go too far with them. Um, but trying to simulate a pandemic spreading on the globe? Sure. I mean, people are working on this and they and we absolutely have to do it. But it has to be a kitchen sink thing. It has to be something where we know how people move around. You know, we really need the measurements to be right because you can't be just sort of making up like yeah, kind of roughly people, you know, that's not good. So, there are, again, these two kinds of models. There's the toy model and the kitchen sink model, and, and computers help us with both of those. Uh, absolutely, absolutely, right? Because all the work we did before computers came along was pencil and paper, and that, that actually really limited how we could think. It really limited how we could think uh, because we needed analytic solutions and so on because then, you know, how else were you going to um, see what was happening? So... It's, it's still really early days in terms of computer simulation, but, uh, and, and we have a lot of arguments about agent-based models and so on as, as to the effectiveness. There's definitely an art to this. Um, and I'll, again, I kind of hope as we go through the course that I'll be able to sort of touch on 
um, things that have worked well, haven't worked well, and so on. But really, yeah, computational aspect of all fields just keeps going up and up. You know, there's a reason we have this term data science now that's taken hold so well, not for everyone, but it really, you know, it really has. And computational X, you know, computational semiotics, whatever you want, right? It's these are these are things that, that are coming and coming, you know, along um, inevitably. They don't replace the previous work, right? Computational linguistics doesn't just sort of wipe out everything that was in it. No, it's it's, it's a and it's an expansion, right? So there's the core where you're able to do all the things that one individual can do or maybe a small group can do and so on and interviews and, and that kind of human sized things. And then we're gonna add to it. So that's the manifesto, right? It's, it's, it's that systems are everywhere. They matter, we can measure them now. Still poorly in some cases, of course, but uh, you know, being able to to measure them puts them into our, you know, into our gamut and, and, and into our wheelhouse. And then it's not that people 500 years ago didn't think you know, systems, of course, everyone's always thought that. Um, but we had a, a spell where we got really good at disciplines and we had to do that. And now we have to kind of dig ourselves out of those things. And I, I feel like I've been saying this for, well, many people have been saying this for a long time, but it's still, it's still the case that we are still, um, happy to silo ourselves into departments and, and, and ways of thinking. So be curious, be open, be playful, um, keep looking around, looking at uh, um, fields outside of your field and uh, yeah, read widely. Um, and, and, and I think you know, collectively, you know, we'll, we'll be able to advance these sciences uh, in, in wonderful ways. Of course, there's a huge ethical piece that overlays all of this. You know, we built, you know, Facebook, right? We have Facebook, good or bad, right? So you have to be very, you can, sure, we can build new systems, but we have to be very, very mindful of, of how they'll play out. Okay, manifesting.